Good afternoon, Mr. Bradley. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Sorry, under these circumstances, um, I'm going to just go straight to where we left off before. Um, Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade were in a romantic relationship, correct? Correct. And um, it began at the time that they were both municipal court judges, correct? I Objection, Your Honor, based on privilege. That will be covered in the attorney client privilege. Okay, overall. I do not have knowledge of it starting um, or when it started. Um, Terrence, you told me that it started when they were both municipal court judges, though, correct? That is incorrect. Um, you never confirmed in writing that it was instead of magistrate court, it was in municipal court judge when they were started dating? If you're speaking of the text message, you can go to that text message and you can read that text message and I will explain the text message to you. But you and I did not have a conversation about when it started. You asked a compound question of magistrate court versus, I mean, you, you said it was magistrate court municipal, match, I mean, you said uh, match, magistrate court conference, I'm sorry. Um, and then you asked another question. I said, no, municipal court, nothing else. I'm referring to a different um, conversation. I asked you, do you think it started before she hired him? And I'm gonna object, because this was covered uh, in the previous hearing, where um, Mr. Bradley said he had no personal knowledge of the exact text that Ms. Um, Merchant is speaking of and actually used uh, in, a, to, in an attempt to refresh his recollection, and he explained exactly um, what he's explaining here before the court. So this is uh, repetitive and unnecessary, and so I would object to asked and answered and, and relevance at this point. All right, uh, perhaps we'll get there, but I think first Ms. Merchant has the right to draw his attention to the exact potentially inconsistent statement. Thank you, Judge. Um, may I approach him? It's overruled. This is the text that And for purposes of the record, uh, I believe, Ms. Merchant, you tendered, was the entire text chain as an exhibit? Um, I only tendered a few of the texts, but I did give the state their, co their courtesy copies last time um, of the exhibits. Was this one tendered? This one was not tendered. No. All right. And I'm happy to tender it. We'll, we'll just take it as it comes. Whatever you want. We're at, um, I, think, I think we're at 39. <laughs> I will wait to mark it, um, but I think we're at 39. May I approach you? You may. So, Terrence, do you remember telling me that it started when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton? I see the message there, but I, I don't recall. Um, I do see that message, but I do not recall. You don't recall texting this? I look back at my text messages um, through uh, that we've had. I see that message, but I do not recall that, no ma'am. Um, and when I asked you if you start, if you thought it started before she hired him, and you responded, absolutely. Your Honor, I'm going to object as to the source of the information um, that Mr. Bradley allegedly uh, gathered this from. Um, there's been absolutely no foundation, um, and based on uh, the arguments of the last hearing, that a lot of this is based on gossip, innuendo, assumption, uh, and privileged information. And at this point, Ms. Virgin has not uh, provided a foundation as to how Mr. Bradley would have any information that she keeps uh, referring to. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Murphy. I didn't ask him about the source of the information. Um, and under Rule 621, I can impeach him with any inconsistent facts. This is an inconsistent fact. I can impeach him with any contrary facts. Sure. This is a contrary Why would it fact. be a relevant uh, impeachment if he actually has no personal knowledge of this? If he doesn't. Sure. So I think knowledge. you have to lay that foundation then, so that'll be sustained. Um, do you remember telling me that it began? Well, that's, and, that doesn't address the no, not. I was, I was just asking if you remember telling me as opposed to the okay, text. Sure. Do you remember telling me that it began? Well, no, and then you're going into the substance of it, which we haven't determined whether he actually knows or how he knows. Um, you told me, in fact, you corrected me 
when I said magistrate court, you corrected me and said it was municipal court. Yeah. Do you remember that? Same objection, Your Honor. This is, this is the exact same issue, right? Well, I'm asking if he remembers that. He hasn't answered that question yet. Right, but the relevance of whether he remembers it isn't established until we know how he remembers it or why he knows it. Okay. If that makes sense. I guess not. <laughs> Sorry. How he knows it, I'm, I, I'm right. just asking if he told me that. Right. So I wasn't asking how he knew that. I wasn't asking the source of that knowledge. I was asking if he told me that. Sure. That was it. But I, that's the point, is how he knows it. Right. The source of his knowledge, the state would contend, is hearsay because it's gossip and innuendo, um, which is what was indicated the last year. Well, it may not be hearsay. It may not be gossip. We haven't really gotten there yet. We don't know how he knows what apparently he's telling her. I think we need to figure that out before we can go any further. Yes. And if the source of the information is a witness who testified, then it's not hearsay. Um, so when did the relationship start? I cannot answer that. Uh, when was your first knowledge of the relationship? Objection, Your Honor. He's already answered that question multiple times today. He said he has no idea of the timeline or, or when it occurred. That was one of the first questions that this person asked. I didn't ask when. I asked his first knowledge. He testified he has knowledge that they had a relationship. I asked him when he first got knowledge of that. Okay. So the, the question is, when did you first get knowledge? I think we can start there. That was the question. Yes. Right. Thank you. When did you first get knowledge of their relationship? I've said over again that I was not, I didn't have any personal information where I could personally say when it started. I've said that time and time again. And, and so I don't, I don't know when the relationship started. And that wasn't my question. So mm -hmm. my question is, when did you first gain knowledge? I didn't ask the source of the knowledge, didn't ask you to comment on the validity of the knowledge. I asked when you first had knowledge. We'll get to the how, Mr. Abadi. So I'll uh, note the objection, overrule it. I can answer I, that. Just for the record, I appreciate your honesty. Um, but he said he has no personal knowledge, so it's clear he had to gain the knowledge not from, from hearsay. He could have gained it from sure. Mr. Wade. Well, I mean, most of us learn things from hearsay. The question of whether, whether it's admissible, right? And that's what we've got to get to. So. Apologize. Right. Um, when did you first get knowledge? I'm not qualifying what type of knowledge. I'm just asking when you first knew about the relationship. I don't know how to answer that. I mean, so I can't give you a date if you're asking for a date. If you're asking me how did I get the knowledge, it would have come directly from a client. Right. So help me understand. I think you say you can't answer that question. You don't know the date. So that's the answer to the question. But I, I said that five minutes ago. We have to make it clear. Yes, sir. Next question, Ms. Merchant. So you don't know the specific date? No. Do you know if it, can we narrow down the timeline? Was it, did you gain knowledge in 2019 of this relationship beginning? I'm going to object to this line of questioning because he said he does not know sure. when he gained the knowledge. Uh, he doesn't overruled. know the specific date. Uh, fine, Ms. Merchant. I think we, I'm overruling that. I think we can try to see if he can narrow it down based on goalposts. Thank you. Um, 19, I would probably say no. I mean, I, I don't have anything that I'm, I'm, um, there wasn't a specific date. There wasn't a football game, there wasn't something that I can attribute to him telling me whatever. And so you're asking for a date, you're asking for a year, it's still a date. And at this time, I am telling you that I do not have the date. Um, let's try this then. So you received a contract from Ms. Willis um, January 2021, correct? Uh, can I see the... <laughs> Uh, yes, I yes, I think so. Are, I think, okay. I think, I, I think it, um, if it was from the uh, exhibits, I think it was 21, yes. And I don't want to belabor the point. You did those yes. when you were here before. Yes. Um, if those documents that you looked at last time. Yes. Said January 2022. That's okay. 21. I I'm sorry, 21. You're right. Thank and you. And it was, I think, renewed in 22. It was, yes. So the contract date was um, that we have in the record is January 25th, 2022. So using that date, at that point, had they begun their romantic relationship? Of 2022. January 25th, 2022. 2021, I'm sorry. When you got your first contract. I, I 
I don't recall. Um, I don't recall any any specific uh, dates. No. Ma'am. You remember when you got that contract, though, correct? I remember I had the contract. Yes. Right. And you told us last week, or I guess it was the week before. Now you told us that Mr. Wade brought you that contract. Essentially, told you about that contract. That is correct. Um, so Ms. Willis is not the one that brought that contract to you directly. It was Mr. Wade. That is correct. At that point in time, they were already engaged in a relationship, though, I'm correct? Object, I can't say that. The characterization of what Mr. Bradley just said. He just said he does not remember. There's nothing specific. He doesn't remember the exact date. And I think the question now is to reference it or tie it to maybe some other event that he might remember. Uh, I agree with Your Honor. She asked that specific question. He said he does not remember any specific dates after signing the contract. That's exactly sure. what he just said. This is asked right. and answered. I know, and we're getting to the end of it. So, Ms. Merchant, you don't have much more to pull on here. But uh, he answered that last question. So, what's your next one? Um, and, and Judge, I, I didn't hear the answer if they were in a relationship right. January 25th, 2021. Mr. Brad, do you recall the question? I, I, I recall the question, and I can't tell you accurately whether or not they were in a relationship at the time. You asked me about him bringing a contract. I said he did bring a contract, and that is accurate. Do you remember prior to, do you remember knowing Ms. Willis prior to her taking office as the DA? I had very little contact with Ms. Willis. Um, I knew her um, through my business of coming down to Fulton, if that's what you're asking. Yes. You knew her through the business. Um, so had, you had met her prior to your contract. I'm going to object to relevance at this point as to why we're here today. Sure. Judge, he doesn't remember much of anything right now. And so I'm trying to create a timeline to hopefully piece this together. All right. Well, um, I, I'm not seeing really the, the likelihood that that's going to have any success. I'll, I'll let you ask a few more questions, but if he doesn't have a date, then I don't know that you're going to be able to create one today. Okay, thank you. Um, So the time that you had this contract from January 2021 until January 2022, did you come in and out of the DA's office? Yes. Okay. And so were you able to witness Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis interact during that time? I'm going to object. This has been asked and answered. It was addressed at the last hearing about Mr. Uh, Bradley's access to and from a specific room to pick up files. And Mr. Bradley said that sure. he rarely saw them together, uh, but this was you know, I think the only avenue that was closed at the last hearing was his personal knowledge, potentially through, well, actually, no, if he testified, is that he had no personal knowledge. It's knowledge that conveyed to him that was cut off at the last hearing. That's really the only thing we hadn't been able to explore, unless you correct me if I'm wrong. Knowledge that was conveyed to him by? By somebody else. That's, that he claimed at the time was privilege. I found that it's not. That's what we're here to explore. Okay. Um. Do you remember telling me that not many people knew where they met? I'm going to object this to relevance as to his personal knowledge, which is what 602 requires. Yeah, I mean, we're back to the same point, Ms. Merchant. His personal knowledge is what I'm asking him what he told me. But he hasn't yet told you how he knows that. And so if, unless he, he can establish why he should be testifying on this at all, then there's no relevance. And I don't know what, how he knows that. That would, be the next qu that would be the next question. But ask I first, him how he knows it. I first have to establish that he said that. No, you don't. You could go the other way around. <laughs> um, when you told me that it started when, you left, when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton, where did you gain that knowledge from? Oh, I'm going to object because his testimony a few minutes ago is that he did not recall making that statement. All right, I'll overrule that. Mr. Bradley, answer the question if you can. Repeat the question. <clears throat> when you told me that their relationship started when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton, where did you obtain that knowledge from? It was... I was speculating. Um, I didn't have a um, no one t 
told me I was speculating. No one told you that? No one told me that. You were speculating based on things that had been told to you or things you had observed? So I'm going to object as to uh, the nature of uh, this line of questioning because the witness has made it clear he was speculating as to how or what he knew. And if it's speculation, it's inadmissible for this court. All right, but the motivations for his reason for speculating would be admissible, so I'll overrule that. Thank you, Judge. Was this speculation, when you told me that, was that based on things that had been told to you and things that you had witnessed? I never witnessed anything. Right. So, um, you know, it, it was speculation. I can't tell you um, anything specific, if that's what you're, you're asking. You can't tell me anything specific as to why you speculated about that? No, this was however many years ago. I mean, I don't recall, but no, I, I don't. Did you have any reason to lie? I don't know if speculation is lying, but I'm... Well, let, let me just... Show me where in this text it says you're speculating. You didn't guessing. ask me if I was speculating or guessing. I didn't ask you, but tell me if it says anywhere here that no, this is speculation. No, if this is the same one that you just showed me, it does not. And you're welcome if you need to to look at your text. Um, is there anywhere in here that indicates that you didn't have knowledge of this no. relationship? I'm going to object to the line of questioning your Honor directed counsel to uh, explore is where he got the knowledge. He's explored that. He said it's speculation, and he didn't get it from any source other than his own speculation. Sure. So I, think, I, I think we're flushing that out, and uh, I think it's her right to have a little leeway on this if she's an adverse witness. Thank you, Judge. And Judge, these speaking objections are clearly coaching the witness because he's regurgitating. Your Honor, I, 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 I object and take offense to that comment. I'm objecting based on the law, and I'm, and I'm making a record for the court. Um, so I, I, I take offense to that comment. It's not the case. All right. Well, uh, I think we can start with uh, objection, the grounds, and the rule number. And then if I need more, I'll ask. Thank you. All right. Thank you. What did Nathan tell you about the relationship? Objection, hearsay. Nathan has testified. It's not yeah. hearsay. It's still hearsay. It's an out of court statement being brought in for the truth of the matter asserted. So, hearsay. Judge. Yeah, this would be for impeachment by contradiction, <coughs> which would Thank be you. an exception to the hearsay rule, and admissible as substantive evidence, and the privilege issues are overruled. Thank you, Judge. Well, I, I think he just overruled the public objection, but, but we don't know when he's talking about. So we've already established that December 2018 right. was the date of the privilege. Sure. And that's something I covered in the in-camera hearing. And I'm, based on what he told me in that in-camera hearing, uh, I don't believe any statements to this effect were covered by privilege. And Judge, I just want for the record, because sometimes the record doesn't reflect where people are looking, and that when I ask a question, Mr. Bradley is looking at Mr. Wade and his lawyer to wait for them to object, and they're clearly interacting somehow in the court. So I just want the ref record to reflect that, because it wouldn't otherwise. It's there now. My, uh, you, a question was put to you, Mr. Bradley. Judge, one of my lawyers is standing, is sitting right in the back, A, um, we're yes, behind. Go down that rabbit hole. You can look wherever you want. Yeah, and I've never looked at Mr. Wade or his attorneys. That sounds good, sure. All right. Mr. Bradley, the question was put to you. Oh, repeat the question, please. Yes. So I showed you, uh, or I asked you, I'm sorry, the question, the last question I asked you was, what did Nathan Wade tell you about the relationship? Same objection, Your Honor. And that's already been ruled upon. Call him stating that at some point they were dating. Uh, I can't tell you what date that was. It was made in confidence. We were in the back of our office. Our offices were the only two in the back. There was no one else present. That is all I can tell you at this time. One time? One time. You only had a conversation with him one time about the relationship? Objection. Asked and answered. No, I think that's a uh, clarify for a thorough and sitting cross. Ms. Merchant. I do not recall any other time that he mentioned uh, that they were in a relationship. No. Um, you may not. Okay. Um, 
Um, so other than, so you talked about this one time, um, and you said you don't know when it was, though, correct? That is correct. Um, was it before Mr. Wade, before you got the contract in Fulton County? Let's start with that. I do not recall. Okay. And um, how did it come up? Say again? How did it come up? I do not recall how it came up. Um, it was in the back. I know it was, I know where it occurred. Um, and our office is in the back. I can't tell you what we were discussing prior to that. Okay. Did you receive an email from me on January 6th um, with a motion attached? I think I did, yes. Yes, I know I, know I, I received a, I don't know if the date is January 6th, but yes, I received that. Okay. Yes. Um, so you remember receiving that? Yes. The date, okay. Um, and you reviewed it, and then you you and I spoke about it. Do you recall that? Do we speak over the phone, or are you saying through a text? That's what I'm asking you. you I, I can't speaking. remember um, whether it was text to phone or. But you recall us speaking one way or another. One way or another, yes. Okay. Um, and where I was trying to confirm the facts in that filing. I think I remember um, <clears throat> there was a line of about um, the accuracy of um, how much money that my office, the law, the law office of Terrence A. Bradley, uh, have received. Um, and whether or not that was going to be in the motion or not. Well, there wasn't a discrepancy. I had kept that out. But you asked me to put that back in, correct? I don't, I, I recall you, um, that may be accurate, yes. And you thought, because you thought it might be suspicious if you were left out of the motion. No, I, I think... We discussed that it should reflect the accuracy because the accuracy was that I received... Um, I had a contract and received seventy four grand, seventy four thousand. Um, and I think you had put in there that Mr. Campbell had received a certain amount, and then you also had put in there that Mr. Wade had received a certain amount. But there was not anything in there originally, and I said that it needed to be accurate. I needed to be accurate as far as that I had received seventy four thousand. Right. That's correct. Because you did not want anyone knowing that you had talked to me. I'm going to object this for relevance. We bias. We rule. I wanted you to be accurate as far as the accuracy of our message or, or your filing. Okay. So that was your, so your interest was in, in accuracy in the file. I didn't reach out to you and say, send me a copy of your motion. Right. I didn't reach out to you to say that you were, that I'm going to be in your motion. Right. I asked you to review it for accuracy. Right. For accuracy. And I just stated that it was inaccurate. And the inaccuracy that you pointed out was the thing about your time or how much you had made. That was the inaccuracy that I, I saw that jumped out was the fact that um, I saw that I was left out when you had put okay. the firm um, the money was. Okay. I did not. I did not. Um, when I responded to that, it was for that specific reason. 